Um, so themes that I've been seeing is that the high volume tickers have been paying me out day in and day out. And I talked about this in Xander's podcast as well, where, you know, identify what brand of ticker has been making you the most money. Is it a high volume ticker? Is it maybe a medium volume ticker? Is it a low volume ticker? I know for shorts that love to short broken stocks, right? You know, you you like, I guess, like kind of like a, a medium level amount of volume, maybe even a pop, and then you want the volume to fade off and the stock to fade. You know, that's something that you want to kind of look for. As far as long traders, you know, and, and I see this a lot, like, uh, maybe one low volume stock will rip and then you have people all oh, shit along did it was low volume, whatever, you know, it's the market, you know, it, things are going to happen. But in my kind of, uh, I guess, observance of the market in the past couple uh, weeks, I've seen that low volume tickers, you, you, I mean, you might get a pop, but I mean, it's either going to be for like a high day clear and fade or, you know, it's not stocks that are, that are going to keep running. It's not stocks that, you know, a lot of shorts are really involved in. So for me, I've just been seeing that the high volume tickers have been paying. Low volume tickers, definitely shitty. You know, uh, you, you might get that one out of 100 that pop and then, you know, you're you're back to longing low volume tickers and you're, you're inconsistent. You're not getting what you want. So what I've been seeing is that the lower volume tickers have definitely been a lot shittier in this market. You know, above VWAP buys are working very well for me. Strength buying is working very well for me. Uh, if I'm trying to buy a dip below VWAP, I find that that has not been working just from what I've been observing. It have been It's the high volume tickers that are pushing above VWAP that are moving that everyone is interested in, you know, that mid-size float, you know, multi-day runner. Those are things that have been paying me. You know, Another thing that I've been noticing a lot in this market is we've been getting a lot of high a day clear outs. And what does that mean? Well, it's when the stock kind of ticks over high a day, a lot of shorts end up stopping out, and then the stock ends up fading. You know, similar to when uh, we're talking about that kind of like low a day bounce, when every every long has been stopped out, and then the stock finally kind of moves higher, just due to the fact that there's probably a ton of shorts involved, and the fact that, uh, you know, it's a lot easier when you don't have long selling into every kind of pop. Uh, you know, so that's just what I've been kind of seeing. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of kind of stair step up, elevator down, where we get a slow grind and maybe we finally get to high a day or we get to that whole number that everyone was kind of looking at. We kind of pop about a bit above that and then all of a sudden we just slam right back down. That's another thing that I've been seeing as well. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of easy to borrow fades. You know, normally it's we get an easy, easy to borrow stock. Uh, you know, we get a ton of uh, short sellers involved, we start to creep higher, creep a little bit higher, we go para, and then that's kind of the play. But what I've been seeing on a lot of easy to borrow stocks is that if shorts are not in trouble, they are not going to cover. So for, for you can't, and, and this is just my opinion, but you can't label every single easy to borrow stock and say to yourself, that is an instant long. You know, if you're a short seller and maybe you have a little bit of a shitty average and you start to get caught on the wrong side, you know, that's something that you've got to stop out on right away. But as far as a long trader, you can't just be, uh, you know, um, this one right here on life. I mean, this one again. So here's what I'm kind of thinking on this again. We kind of do move higher and we get to eight bucks, but I mean, I'm just saying to myself, okay, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking and I'm going to take the pen out again here, but I'm saying, okay, what would give shorts a ton of FOMO? These candles right here, uh, that would give shorts a ton of, of FOMO and they're expecting this to kind of run all the way down and keep going down as an all day fader, right? But when we start kind of getting this move higher and I mean, I'm guessing we have a ton of shorts that are just going to use VWAP or a little bit higher as risk. So when we start kind of moving up above here, that's when we get a ton of people who have shorted under these candles, deep, deep, deep trouble, right? That is a deep, deep, deep sense of trouble when we start to move higher. And that, in my opinion, is why we got this push higher, right? Everyone who shorted after these candles expecting this fade got caught off guard, and we did get that move higher. So that's what I was kind of looking for on this one. Um, you know, I, I guess, like, I was just kind of saying to myself, like, eh, you, you know, can work, so... Um, yeah, that's what I was kind of looking for. I don't know. Oh, yeah, race all link. Okay, yeah, that's what I was kind of looking for on this one. Uh, this one, DTSS. Uh, so just kind of into kind of 250s, was kind of looking for that, you know, move high a day. We didn't really get it. 
Uh, so I kind of sold off, you, you know, and we did push and we did kind of clear out. But this is what I'm kind of talking about with these high day clear outs, right? So number one, on on this, from what I see, you know, we're doing we're doing lower volume down here. So that's your first sign. If we're doing lower volume, that's my first sign that this has got to be an instant nail and bail, right? We're doing low 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 volume. We get this final kind of clear out. You know, that's telling me that this has got to be nail and bail, and that this is probably kind of manipulated by, you know, those algos that Bao kind of talks about. And so when I took this and I noticed that we weren't moving over here, that was my sign to kind of take it off. And yeah, we did end up kind of getting this, but, you know, clears out, goes lower. Uh, for me, I just felt that the stock selection wasn't great, and I felt that kind of, uh, I guess, for me on the, in this kind of type of scenario, like I didn't really love it. So, you know, but... Uh, again, the high volume, uh, the high volume stocks are paying me. They're paying me out. These low volume tickers are what fucks you up, right? Do uh, avoid these at all costs, right? They're rigged. They're manipulated. They stop out shorts, and then you know we're right back here. We're, you know, obviously we're still propped up, but you know, avoid these ones. Uh, this one on BLU. I mean, this is a pretty straightforward setup, right? We, we get this kind of weakness out of the gate, and when we hit this kind of low, every single, uh, you know, every single person who's shorting this is thinking, fade, 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 all day, home run, home run, right, again. And so we get back above in the view app area, and I'm saying to myself, all right, you know, uh, we have a ton of people who probably were FOMO short here. Maybe they got paid. Maybe they covered. I'm not really sure. Um, just imagine if you're short at 450. We get down to 350. You're up a dollar a share. And as a short, that's a lot. And you're like, oh, I'm holding. This is the big home run trade. And we start to reverse. And you're like, oh, I don't want to cover. Oh, I don't want to cover. Definitely not covering here. And we finally squeeze them out and get that move lower, right? And to me, that's just kind of what I saw. We probably got a ton of people who are short and covered. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure what pushed this stock back up. But as we get to this kind of level, I know that shorts are going to be in trouble. And we got that move back. Um, so, yeah, as a short, you got to make sure that you're covering. Um, or someone like me is just going to, uh, you know, wait till the kind of iron's hot and start striking on the way up. Uh, this one, NNVC. Uh, this one is a pre-market trade, I believe. Yeah, so basically what I'm seeing here again is we kind of have this kind of scenario where... Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.